radio <clears throat> so let's start with uh, the monthly on uh, NQ and we'll just walk our way from there right um, <clears throat> who here can uh, tell me what are the possible things that we should do here right just by looking at this we have 21 range high, which we've taken, we've retested. We have um, the OLR on a monthly right there. So it's either that we are in a one to one and a half standard deviation manipulation, which is everything from October 22 to now, or we're pushing up much higher to two, 2.3, 2.5. If we go higher, um, up to 40, right? So that's the one. Second one is always going to be when you're dealing with the range. When was the last time we had a stop hunt uh, occur? On the monthly, it seems it would be right here in August, right? We had a stop run here, which means if that's an OLR, we can also project that leg going up there. And if that's an AMD, we could also project the wick, but it's it's neither here nor there for me. Uh, but this is the last time we had a stop hunt leg right here, which means our range technically since uh, August is wherever we are we're from August to wherever we are right now. If there were any pullbacks into this range, the most likely areas that I would look for would be within this range and most likely at the rejection block somewhere around here if there were any uh, pullbacks now. So what does that look like on a, on a weekly? We'll take out this previous all-time high. It looks like it's around the order block from uh, August, right? Now on the weekly, we've closed, closed above here and we've also closed above the November highs as well. And what that indicates is that price is willing to go higher, but there could be potential pullbacks into the range, right? So on a weekly, it's you, they've left a lot of weekly um, algo draws below us. They left a lot of weekly algo draws uh, below us. So um, price is going up at the moment. Now, from a wave theory point of view, I... Let's get rid of this guy here. I wanted it to be a situation where if you look at this order block here, somewhere around the all time highs right there, it was sort of the mother order block, the mother block where they've dipped in twice before um, carrying on higher. Now there's no saying that they don't dip in there once more, but that's 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 pushing it for now right that's pushing it for now because it's not showing us that it wants to possibly come here now from past experience i've seen a lot of um this kind of delivery right uh in wave theory we called it an expanding triangle where if this leg up here was the end of something we then go into uh, consolidation because you would remember last week I told you that price would move impulsively and then we would go into some sort of uh, consolidation and then price continues higher and those consolidations could be um, a couple of uh, different things the main one I told you to focus on was something like this or the zigzag pattern which is something like this if we are bullish and if we are uh, bearish um, it would be something like this, right? Where the initial impulse came from a uh, bearish move came down here, we consolidated like this, and then we pushed downward. There are not so common um, variations to that. And I'm just trying to figure out whether this is one of them where we have the first leg, the second leg goes higher, the third leg goes lower than here, the fourth leg goes higher, and then we get a final fifth leg, which does something like that, right? This is the triangle. 
many uh, would be used to seeing a triangle uh, this way, a contracting triangle, right? Uh, this variation is an expanding, some people call it a megaphone, whatever it is, right? So if I were to think that something like that was going to occur, then we need something to happen uh, soon, right? We need something to happen soon uh, for us to figure, figure out whether, if they want to go down, where's the most likely place that they would go down to? And just by looking at it structurally, it seems that if they came here, there's a neat little... Um, high probability failure swing, which is an untapped low that does not form part of the rejection block uh, idea down here <clears throat> inside this mother OB, right? And you would notice that we would also get to mitigate 50% of this um, OB, right? So if they're accumulating inside this OB, then I'd look for them to come here, take these two relative equal lows out, and then we continue higher, right? It won't be a case of any um, higher time frame, higher uh, weekly time frame change in the state of delivery, which, I mean, this is, this is the delivery we're talking about, right? If anything was gonna happen around here, <clears throat> it's gonna happen below here, below this level here, right? Not even these, because these are relatively uh, close to each other. So if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen between um, these two lows right here. But that's putting the, the cart before the horse, so to speak. Let's have a look at the, uh, we look at a five day because um, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, Pule, Pule, uh, mentioned it. We could, um, Look at any stop hunt legs inside here and, and try and project those as well. Uh, not much of a much inside here. Piuli, Piuli, thank you. On the daily, we had, uh, or still have, range high taken, right there. Range low, still intact. So I'm looking for any changes in the state of delivery to occur here where we get back below the range low or it retests the range high and wants to push higher now on a daily um, we'd have to talk about um, where a change of state in the way where a change in the state of delivery would occur and in order for me to uh, tackle that we're gonna have to dive into some order block um, lessons I suppose right now and just get you thinking about which are the most uh, high probability order blocks and where to um, de determine where the change in the state of delivery actually occurs and what are your expectations for any closes below previous range lows that you would consider a change in the state of delivery right uh, we'll tackle into that um, on an even lower time frame, you can see that on our six hour, uh, six hour range candles, the theory that we have here, I'll just put this off, keep the range box on. Right, it was actually kind of neat um, that I expected at this point, a Thursday high of the week, price pull down and then we uh, effed off higher here. I was actually long inside here, but closed it somewhere here because of two things. I wanted lower pricing, and this was the CE, if you can see that, the CE of this six hour range right here. Where did we bounce off? CE of this six hour range right there. If I had to draw a line for you, it would be there, right? So from, from six hour high taken to a CE, to a CE, and then to a high, right? That's the standard uh, six hour play that we look, look at from high or low to CE and from CE to high to low. You'd notice that six hour candles uh, are supporting price bullishly, right? So there's no reason yet for us to get 
uh, bearish. I'm actually kicking myself. I was actually long down here. I closed it. Um, I closed it here. Here or here? Uh, right. OBs. Let's talk about... Um, you know, I gave you guys all the goods in the advanced entry model course. When we talk about OBs, there's a lot of things that we need to uh, speak about. Like, what is an OOB? What is a high probability OB? How would you determine uh, an OB, right? And when we, yeah, can never get enough of OB source. Hopefully this will uh, make things a bit clearer. So, <clears throat> you know, classic ICT definitions of an OB would be him telling you that the OB is the entire series of down candles in this case. Uh, good question, text. Let's have a look. It's still recording, right? It's the entire series of down candles. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? The entire series of down candles, he would look for a change in the state of delivery to occur at the opening price of that series of down candles. But where I come from, where I came from, we uh, tend to look at more aggressive um, plays around the OB, right? And there's nothing wrong with using the entire series of down candles to confirm uh, what are the hours ranges for the six hour box? It's 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 12 p.m. to uh, 1800, but we only have the 6 a.m. candle marked, right? So when we talk about um, OBs and aggressive forms of OBs, we're always looking for liquidity to be taken. That's number one, right? Number one rule it should take liquidity. And there should ideally be some sort of displacement that occurs afterwards. Now, when we talk about taking liquidity, it could be any high or low, any range high or range low, some sort of predefined range high or range low, right? We have a lot of those that we use and we'll get into that as well. In this case here, here's a low here. If we look to the left, it probably came into some imbalance took another low to the left here uh, on this time frame or the higher time frame. But what we want to draw your attention to is number one, in the aggressive version of an OB, right? And I'm not telling you to be aggressive, I'm merely giving you all of this information. Uh, daily FEG, perfect, right? I'm giving you all of this information so it starts to open up those pathways um, for you guys. Whenever we talk about an OB, it's generally body to body, right? Depending on the size of the wicks, I'm talking body to body. The very first sign of any sort of reversals um, that occur would be that we close above 50%, right? Now, if you are very aggressive, that would mean that on this candle body closed, you would do something like this because you have no expectation of this low being taken because why did they form this OB inside liquidity, like here, inside the daily FEG, whatever it is to the left, and they are starting to close above 50% of this order block. And more importantly, you would see that order blocks are confirmed once we trade through the high of the down candle or the low of an up candle. So this is where your order block is uh, confirmed. You guys agree with that? The, the high of a down candle confirms the OB, right? Simple. So first sign is we're closing about 50% of this order block, like so. First sign. Second sign is we are now starting to close or trade through the high of the down candle. A week is enough. Week is enough, right? 
it's only when we're talking about this change in the state of delivery that we're worried about uh, body closes, right? So for now, confirming an order block would be a wick. Wick is enough. When we talk about, you remember, I, give, I there was a video series that I did about MSS and how to confirm MSS with and without an FEG. So I think you guys need to just revisit that uh, video there, right? Determining MSS with and without an FEG. You know that my ideal scenario of play would require an FEG in the stop hunt leg because we use that to determine MSS once we close above it. Uh, any down candles that form, uh, it should be it should be uh, dirty. It should be in uh, WAP. Any down candles that form in this range, we'd like to trade them as OBs once they confirm themselves as order blocks and uh, drive price higher. But in the absence of any uh, any FEGs in the stop hunt leg, remember this blue level here was the real low in the market before the OLR occurred, right? Closing back above the real low or back inside the range is how you would determine MSS. So in the absence of any FEGs being present here, when we close back inside the range, that is a form of MSS, right? It just so happens that they've also closed above 50% of this order block, which is not, not good for any further downside uh, expectations right so number one we have a low we have an order block formed in liquidity we start to creep up and close above 50 percent of this order block back inside the range and then we trade through the order block right here now generally what would we be looking for we'd be looking for entries at 50 percent because my um, teachings to you all would be 50% of an order block must be mitigated. When they don't mitigate 50% of that order block, it leaves any lows that they create inside it uh, as levels of inducement. Right? So what happens is they come back for them later, take those levels, uh, of inducement out you want to call them SBS whatever it is I'm calling it inducement or engineered liquidity inside the OB right and you're gonna see that later on they, they do come back and they take specifically this inducement level right here now if I were talking about um, the entire range of order blocks Let's go up here to down there. You can see 50% mitigated right there. But there are times, so when we talk about an entire range of order blocks or a series of down candles, it is understanding narrative, right? That's the difference. Narrative versus precision. Narrative tells us that this is, or this series of down candles from that low that high to that low this is an OB we've confirmed it one once we've traded above here and we've now retraded or retraced to 50% and price effed off right this is narrative narrative tells us that this is a bullish order block if price should come ever come back to 50% I'm ideally looking for a setup um, that's something like this right precision would precision elements would come in when I talk about taking this specific lows inside the order block inducement or high probability uh, failure swings, um, why include the up candle in the OB down candles, right? Right. So remember, it's going to go back to the OB model that I've given you of how we identify OB ranges. Narrative states that For me to identify an OB range, we have a move down, a move up, and a move down, right? This is an OB range, wick to wick. I don't care what the color of these candles are. 
I want the highest high to determine the swing high and the lowest low inside there, right? So it's the same thing when we talk about this right here. This would have been the bearish order block I would have considered right there. We've closed above it. I'm bullish. This entire series of candles from the high to the low is what I'm interested in. The whole range, right? This is, this is, this is narrative that we're talking about. The whole range. When we talk about precision, you could start to look at only the specific um, down candle that actually took the liquidity or the lows. Right? Right there. And most of the time, uh, I like narrative, but on lower time frames, you could get more precise um, looking at things like this, where you take on a down candle, we take from the opening price to the lowest wick. And this would be your extreme order block. Any failure swings inside here or levels of liquidity we can take, we aim for. If you go back and look at God speed, what does God speed tell you? If we had the zoom model that looks like this, which you are all familiar with, where we have candle one, and then we have candle two coming in to take that, and then we have candle three like that. Candle two, right? Could possibly uh, we have a wick here, a wick here, and a wick here, right? So God speed is basically the rejection block idea of where we'd like price to revisit. Because remember, if this is a three bar swing low in the making, or three candles, or zoom model, if you look at it deeply, then your ideal entry is going to form between the real low, which is here and the lowest price which is there like that this is the zone that you would ideally want your entry to form but if i were to be more precise i would look at the actual lowest body in the range for the god speed level and you're going to find that in instances or most of the time in this case right there that that's what they're going to tap they're going to tap the opening price or the lowest body in this case which is the God speed level of the rejection block. You see that? And you could go back and look at many examples of rejection blocks that occur and how they always come back to tap that opening price. Because if you break it down and think about that TTFM uh, model that plays, right? Candle one, candle two, Candle three, what are they looking for uh, most of the time? Are they not looking for, uh, let's do that. Let's do that. Whoops. And let's do this. Are they not looking for candle three to retrace and then go higher? And if you look specifically what that retracement is, would be a Godspeed level. Make sense? You want your entries to form at the opening price of this candle. You want your entries to form at the opening price right there. So most of your entries must form or should form at the opening price. Ideally, right? So when we talk about aggressive plays, like I mentioned, it's finding the specific order block that occurred in uh, or formed inside liquidity which is this single candidate right here. I could take it like that, single candidate right here. And if it's not mitigated or unmitigated, I'm ideally looking for 50%. They didn't give us 50% of this extreme uh, order block inside here, which makes me think at some point they will come back for it, right? <clears throat> but the narrative is this. That's the narrative. <clears throat> the narrative is telling us they're now looking for higher pricing. They're going to use 50% uh, of the entire series of order blocks 
and they're gonna try and push price higher, which they did on Friday at NFP. Right. And if you're astute enough, more often than not, you're gonna find that your entry forms at the uh, also either the real low or the lowest candle body before the OLR occurred. Lowest candle body before the OLR occurred. Look there. Just look to the left, right? So it's basically taking your real low in the market, lowest body in that range there, sending it across. You're going to find some crazy things happening to the left. Right. So ideally, we should have hit some high time frame point of interest, MOD level, um, MOD level on the uh, stat map, and that's what we're looking for. So when we look at variations around um, those kind of plays, there is something that most of you may not um, not be aware of. It's when we're looking at the order block candidate, right? It's always, almost always going to be the very first body that closes inside liquidity. So at this point, right here, if I was to get bearish right here, and this is the candle, not 1212 candle right here, I'm looking for any closes below 50%, but more importantly, any trading through the low of this up candle because why the fuck would they take liquidity close inside liquidity then close below the slow right here or trade through the slow they shouldn't they should ideally leave a breakaway gap of some sort and then drive price higher but <clears throat> when you start to look at these things it's why i posted something on on twitter where we look at just this single candle body to body right there. This is the OB that would really give me the change in the state of delivery. So when we carry on here and we notice that um, let's have a look, things like this, right? They wick the high right here. This brings in another model, uh, which Sniper uh, and Gratiano like to lose, uh, use, which is called failed expansion, right? Failure to expand above a high. Again, <clears throat> look, at, look at what this is showing us. Failure to expand above a high, and we are closing back within the range, right? We're closing back inside the range. If you are clever enough or aggressive enough like someone like kx you would short this candle right here as it closes and closes back inside the range he shorted this candle right there now you're still looking uh whoops you're still looking for let's get back to that area where was it right here you're still looking for confirmation in the change of the state of delivery. You get it here. Look at where, um, where it bounces off. So once you confirm things like this, where we traded through the low of that single candle that formed inside the liquidity, <clears throat> you looking at your normal order block model right if this is a specific order block that we were looking for for the change in the state of delivery to occur there's 50 percent there's the sell-off so there's lots of things that you could look in in just this specific piece of price action you could look at the single uh, order block that formed inside liquidity closing below it CSD retracement expansion, you could look at your flash, our beloved flash range right there. Lots of things, right? Failure to close or failure to expand above the highs. 
all of these require some sort of CSD. So if you're failing to close above the highs and then you trade below a down an up candle low, that's an aggressive form of CSD. Because essentially what these candles are telling you is that, whoops, if you think about what this single candle is telling you, it's telling you something like this, right? Would you not short that? Is this not the model, so to speak? <clears throat> just give me a second. Um, Sam, just tell mom to look at her WhatsApp really quickly. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, hourly candle would have... Uh, you see, these most of my entries are forming inside a macro, right? XX50 to XX10. Uh, You're going to see that because I think within, after that uh, time period, onto the next macro, it's either going to deliver, it's, it's, it's going, to, going to reach its objective and deliver to where it needs to, or it's going to mess around um, and just chop about. So <clears throat> we understand that there's times where we look at specific candles that form in, uh, form in liquidity, and those would be a candle like this. We look at candles that form in liquidity like this, then we get a CSD because it's failure to expand. If I were to invert this, and you could try this for some of the guys that don't um, have, an, uh, have a liking to maybe longs only or shorts only, right? Reverse this and tell me what you would have done in this situation if the chart was upside down, right? You'd be looking for lows to be taken, real low in the market, quick, 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 close back above the range. We got a flash model inside here, retracement here, I'm buying this, right? Any imbalances inside here that I can visibly see, nothing in particular, um, to the left, right, there's a 22 model inside here. You could trade that, but we're not interested in the 22 model specifically, right? We're interested in, if I look to the left here, and this was the specific candle right there. We go above it, trade back, price is gone, right? Now, <clears throat> It all comes down to the fact that you are going to be going to need to be able to identify when a change in the state of delivery should occur, right? If I were to tell you on that specific uh, piece of price action or those specific uh, candles right here, that a change in the state of delivery most likely did not occur here what would you have to say about that and why would i say that so when we talk about a change in the state of delivery there are max expectations and time frame alignments that we need to speak about right when we talk about something uh, like that I would argue or say that a change in the state of delivery would have to occur right here. And if you want to go into detail about it, it's a simple, simple visual system that I need you to um, look at, right? And I've covered this before. We have um, smart money reversal occurring here. Price moves higher. Right, the, <coughs> if you were to look at or think about MMXM models for a second, right? 
everything here would be or should be a consolidation in a market maker uh, buy model, right? And it's only once we let's get here, let's get this guy here, let's get these guys here. So <clears throat> when I yeah, trading range versus uh, dealing range. Besides that, right? Besides that. I specifically drew this, this little move inside here. Because one could get fooled into thinking that a change in the state of delivery occurred here. And we need to short this now. Right, wrong? You guys have fallen for something like this before. You've seen something like this before. <clears throat> seen it before, right? Of course. But when you, you, you're going to start to see why I've me said, mentioned or said a few things that I've said before and why they are so important, especially if we view it in the con context of what I'm, what I'm doing right now that every single retracement, in this case, bullish order flow, has a maximum expectation of what? Can anyone remember? Every retracement in bullish order flow has a maximum expectation. Okay, OB range, partly there, partly there. of the previous OB range. That's it, right? The previous OB range. So when we think about the high time frame like this, don't get caught up in lower time frame MMXM models that occur inside here where we see something that looks like a market maker sell model or change in the state of delivery but remember, if an objective is not met higher up, uh, I'm too good at this. I'm, I'm just too fucking good at this. Look at that, four standard deviations. Right. So <clears throat> every retracement has a maximum <clears throat> expectation of just the previous order block range. <clears throat> that should be instilled and drilled inside your head that you can expect nothing more from the market or expect the market to give you nothing more than the previous order block range, right? Which means in this case right here, it is only when we start to close below the lows of the previous OB ranges that we start to see a change in the state of delivery. Now for guys like Saba and uh, Kale, if you're gonna watch this, it is why when Cole Brew said, this is not a fucking change in the state of delivery. What are you fucking talking about? Right? Partly correct. Because this may be a lower time frame change in the state of delivery occurring here, but it's max expectation or the max expectation that you should have for it is 50% of the previous order block range. Now, like Queenie said, is this not what Flash is about for continuations? It is. That's what it is. Flash is mitigation for continuation, higher or lower. And 50% of these ranges is all we should be looking for unless there's some imbalance within the range that we can trade or if they have traded inside this range sufficiently, then just the opening price of that. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Is it making sense why I'm telling you that up here, this may have been a wick like so, right? That may have been a wick like so. So there was no expansion through the highs here at, at, at the top. And any retracement expectations I should have had 
were mainly or should mainly be to here right this range right here 50 percent expect higher price and prices but then why why the fuck again have they closed below this range to the left they should not have once they do this then we know it's a confirmed change in the state of delivery everything inside here that occurs is just telling you retracement max expectations 50 percent of the previous order block range right when they start to close below the the lows of the consolidations to the left or down candle ranges to the left we can now do things like this invert this order block and it may be a single order block it may be a range that you want to look at like so and trade 50 percent with our stop above the high right order block flips and we would carry on doing so doing so until an objective is met all the way down here which could be the original consolidation that led to this high being created whatever it is right fractal consolidations can help uh, with this so far um, I haven't seen anything uh, better but if you look at what I'm telling you and what fractal consolidations do do then yeah fractal consolidations could help uh, with something like this especially if you um, don't filter out the consolidations you could probably get something yeah if three pdras get violated then uh, your ass is next that's not wrong that's not wrong right let's look at what i'm uh telling you or trying to tell you here we'll go down to an m1 just so it's more uh visual T trades is not a fractal consolidation indicator. The fractal consolidation indicator is an actual uh, two degrees indicator, right? Think about think about all that happened inside here. So here, any change in the state of delivery I think that occurred should have a max expectation of this little blue range right here. But the moment we started to close below consolidations to the left, right? You can see that this fractal consolidation has this consolidation, this consolidation, and this consolidation. If we were clever enough, we could use just the common area of all of them. And you can see why this was a good short because we started to close below blows to the left or you could have used this guy right here same thing we close below him look here any change in the state of delivery you see here that occurs up candle up candles forming trading below the lows of up candles you take your entry and it's the same thing you close below here you're looking to trade retracements back to 50 percent of the range and so on and so forth and it's the same thing on the way up here if we're starting to close here then we're looking for retracements back inside there so this is fractally what I'm trying to explain to you and if you were to use that in um, right use that in determining a change in the state of delivery because what some may call a change in the state of delivery would be um, the last expansion high or the last expansion low, right? So if you were on a 15 minute, right? If you were on a 15 minute, some would argue that a change in the state of delivery for bullish pricing would only occur right there. Why right there? Because this low right here was the last expansion low before the olr occurred right here it is also the previous ob range right there 
So if I were to look at any changes in the state of delivery to occur, uh, TT trades, ICT wise, it would be the opening price and closing through it right there. Change in the state of delivery, retracement, expansion. Uh, well, I have you. I'd love to get the FY. I, I did give you a link to the FYB indicator, uh, purely, purely. I did. I'll check your DMs or uh, wherever you asked. I did show you where the link was so it's important to um, factor in or determine when we think about this these things visually that if this was a consolidation here then we had SM SMR occurring down here that whilst there may be a change in the state of delivery occurring here that it could perhaps have a maximum expectation of only that much right there and we fall off a cliff again. But the fact that they have now traded through the opening price right here is sort of confirming that this is now a valid higher time frame change in the state of delivery and that bullish pricing should follow. Make sense? The last expansion low before the OLR or the previous OB range before the OLR, right? Just the previous OB range. The previous OB range is always gonna be our max expectation until proven otherwise. It's why flash exists. And it's why when we trade through it or invalidate it, why we take uh, opposing trades. Here was a good, um, a good one somewhere here. I'll find it in the week. Let's have a look. I think this one uh, down here. If we look, let's try and look lower time frames and see what occurred there. That any retracements, let's go here. At this point, Right here, any retracements have a maximum expectation of at least 50% of the previous OB range. I could look at that. I could look at, uh, have this marked off as some sort of Godspeed level there. I could further look at just the single OB candidate right here from the opening price to the lowest wick, drag it out in time, make this a different color. And these are the expectations that I could have for this, right? Godspeed level, look at the body is not closing below it. You would remember me saying that they can wick through the previous OB range, they should never close through it. And it is not random that they didn't close through the opening price of this range right here, why? You remember from that M15 example that I gave you, if they start to close through this and close through these lows, it would create a change in the state of delivery on the higher time frame. I'm not talking about just this simple lower time frame retracement expectations. This most common on the entire range, uh, OB range is wicked. Yeah, as long, as long as they're wicking it, not closing below it, these are good um, good places to look at, Godspeed and Extreme Odd Block. So is everyone familiar or on, on point or on board with how we are dealing with trading Extreme Odd Blocks, uh, incorporating Godspeed levels and so on and so forth? Is everyone uh, familiar with that kind of uh, logic and why why we do or would look for the things that we look for because <clears throat> uh, saying with nephew Sam really block useful no but I'm new right so when you look at um, 
some of the guys inside the group, right? And some of the crazy shades that they take. I don't, um, I try to stay off the M1, right? As much as I can. I don't think M1 is, is for everyone. No one should be, not everyone should be trading the M1 just because it exists. It does not mean uh, you should trade it. My philosophy would be if and when the setup shows, you can't not take it. You've got to put money on it, right? So if the setup presents itself, you have to put money on it. And when you start to incorporate all of the things that I've shown you, failed expansion, expand, remember this, this little piece of price action or area right here took liquidity of this OB to the left right there. We have these lows right here, which we are wicking, 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 failure to expand below these lows, closing back above. We have an order block candle candidate right here we could take the entire series if you wanted, or we could be specific on just this down candle right there and trade that, right? Because this is a rejection block idea that is occurring inside here. You could refine it to the lowest body there somewhere, wherever the lowest body is, and look to trade uh, that price area. But <clears throat> most of the entries you are going to look for is going to be revolving around this kind of PA. Whether it's going up a long way first then coming down or whether it's going up just a short distance here like so then wicking into the range then going that's it. That's your entry. Your, jo your, your job is to capture as much as you can. Now <clears throat> You miss this, right? It's fine. We had retracement. We had liquidity being taken internally, like so. Failure to expand below the low. The moment the CSD is right here, you're going to buy with your stop below here. Now, if you were intuitive enough you would notice on the higher time frame that is this not the flash range right there if i go back down to an m3 m5 let's have a look that's your range right there now how did i how or why did i trade this range specifically or have um more confidence in trading that specific range well if we look at it on a higher time frame m15 m5 uh, h1 is did we not create a, an feg here did we not close above that feg did we not print a down candle body inside that feg is this not your bash block model right here should i not be trading 50 percent of that bash block right there would my entry not look like this. What would I target? Bring out the old standard deviation FIBS and we would go for two to two and a half, two standard deviations right there. <clears throat> but most of you won't look at it this way or look at what actually happened here because you're on the M1. You're trying to find the best entry on the M1. And I'm telling you now, stay off the M1. M5, M15, H1 and higher. <clears throat> That's where you're going to find your logic. Try and frame your logic around um, M5. Everything that occurs on M5 in terms of failure, willingness, it's... I did not post or do those videos in warp for nothing, right? Where <clears throat> I showed you about algo draws. I spoke about willingness to move above or below range highs or range lows and where or why <clears throat> uh, speed and breakaway gaps should occur. Should they not occur 
above highs and lows that have already taken liquidity to the left. Once we, once we trade through them, there should be speed and a breakaway gap. These are all pieces to the puzzle that need to be put together. Identifying the order block at the right time within a macro. There's your flash range, which is why I like the bash uh, idea, bash block idea, because it's flash. Bash is flash. FEG in the stop hunt leg, we close above it, MSS. Um, now, there's one thing that, there's one thing that I need to tell you that I may have uh, mentioned in passing. And you're gonna see why, um, why it's so, right? Why it's so. That when MSS occurs, before an order block is confirmed, that means that they would raid the order block. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means if MSS is occurring right here, when this candle closes through the FEG, that's MSS, right? Or when this low, we close back above it, that's MSS, right? So MSS has occurred, but the order block is only confirmed right there. So if the MSS occurs before we confirm the order block, the order block gets raided. Hmm. Go back and test that out for yourself. So you could have reasonable expectations after the order block is confirmed and MSS is confirmed, whichever came first, the chicken or the egg, the order block must be or should not be raided, depending on what happened, right? Lots of tiny pieces of uh, information inside here. Right. Um, the system, so is it is it like at least somewhat clear all right Saba, one more time let's go what is it what is really get what is getting raided the order block is getting raided they're raiding the order block again right there Now, <clears throat> is it, thank you, is it, or are we a little bit more clearer on the concept of extreme order block uh, trading, um, recognizing the single candle that forms in liquidity, how CSD should occur, where actual CSD should occur for larger reversals, versus CSD that only gets you a max expectation of the previous OB range. There's no, uh, there's no real, real way to navigate these kind of things, right? There's, there's always going to be, um, there's always going to be something and you know, auto pairing zones are never always going to be on point as such. Um, it's just going to be following narrative uh, more than precision, right? Um, because what narrative is going to tell you is you're bullish, you expect a retracement to occur. It should, my basic teachings would say that this is the entire range that you would look to trade. 
if they are no, if, you see why this navigates, this logic navigates everything quite cleverly, right? Because I'm not telling you look for 50% here. I'm not telling you to look for the auto pairing zone. I'm not telling you to look for the God speed. I'm telling you, this is the OB range. That's the confirmation. This is the retracement into it. What I am telling you is that within this OB range, are there any identifiable imbalances? No, they aren't. If there are no identifiable imbalances, trade the opening price right there. The highest body right there, trade that. Right? It's, it's a dumb system. But when we start to incorporate all of the, um, the other things, right, the fancier things, I could say on a lower time frame, there could have been an auto pairing zone right, right here. Let's have a look. Not that I want you to go um, <clears throat> lower time frame on these things, but for the sake of, of this specifically, let's do it, right? On the lower time frame, I could do something like this, right? We had this auto pairing zone right there. On the lower time frame, my entry is going to be when this 932, let's go up here. When this 932 candle closes back above the order pairing zone and we get a CSD of this down candle right here. I'm going to trade, treat this down candle as an OB right there. I'm going to trade any retracements back into the order pairing zone. I'm going to do something like that and we're going to look for some standard deviation fib right there one to one and a half or two standard deviations but you get my point right that's using an order pairing zone um, here say i wasn't on m1 i am on an m3 power of three time frame even better or um, m5 or higher I don't have a discernible or easily identifiable order pairing zone right here because there were no candle bodies that closed below here. Well then, let's flip it the other way around. We start to close above here. I could take that high. This is the high we closed above, the low of the next candle right there. Well, look at that. On this time frame, three minute, five minute, whatever. I'm buying this, I'm buying this, I'm buying this. The FUB is always going to be anchored. Remember, for you to use the FUB, you need some sort of accumulation, a failure swing, failure to go higher than that. You need the OLR. You need the opposing liquidity run, the sweep, the Judas, the turtle soup, the manipulation leg, then the push away. Your FUB is going to be to the lowest low, to the highest high at the swing point where the CSD should occur. And that's your expectation. So that's where your standard deviation FUB comes in. <clears throat> How about the second candle? How about the second candle right to the low of the OPZ? Uh, I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure what that means. But again, when you're dealing with um, way left, you're talking about here, here, <laughs> second candle right there hotter hotter okay right geez there yeah you could you could enter right there you could enter right there but remember that there's larger things in play you are um we're looking for plays right to push higher but on a time frame that is 
not visible to us because we don't have it on or we are unaware of it, it's going to be this. This will, the higher time frame will always win over these lower time frame um, moves. But yeah, no one's saying you can't enter there. As it starts to move, you're either going to take profit there or trail your stop. And it's the same thing over and over again because once you um, once you can identify these as confluence, right? Then there's an FEG and an auto pairing zone. You're gonna find that there'll be times where right there that they get run and then they reclaim and then they move. Right? Random. <clears throat> so your job is to take the setup as it comes, understand what the risk uh, is on these setups and um, you have the flash model you have your ob model zoom um, you understand what god speed is you understand trading imbalances versus opening price versus 50 percent you know, always you know what i like to do uh, or, or used to like to do and i, I stop for some stupid reason is I would take profit, like I said, I would <clears throat> close um, close the amount that I would have been stopped out with, but leave my stop loss at the same uh, point. I wouldn't move the stop loss. So say I was going to lose <clears throat> $100 or $200, whatever. I take off an amount equal to that uh, in profit. And leave my stop loss at the original. I, will, I, I don't fuck around with moving the stop loss. Most of the time, um, I'm a bit greedy where I look to take a trade and just hold it. It's why you would see me fucking taking trades on a Monday or Tuesday and just holding them, like down here somewhere. <clears throat> so. You know, I'm not in the, um, I don't want to be an intraday trader. My trades may be one or two a day maximum, right? Uh, London or New York, or maybe London and New York, right? Like, I don't want to be trading every single five minute move. Now, the next bit, this one's going to be for um, Sam, right? For right he asked me about why I do some of the things that I do in terms of uh, efficiency or inefficiency. Remember, everything we trade or seek to trade must have, um, um, must be defined within a range, right? And I'm going to use the example of the overnight session range because it's going to give you more insight into trading those order blocks and the profiles around it. But more so, we're going to talk about it in terms of uh, efficiency versus inefficiency. And that comes from um, one of the calls that I did, right? One of the calls that I did where he asked, why was I blocking off the things that I blocked off? Let's, um, let's get more into that. Let's get more into that. Right. Um, shit, where can we start? Let's find the place. Now, <clears throat> the dumb way or the dumb version of me doing this is find find any high or low let's just switch off uh oh, we'll keep this on for now right we'll keep this on for now find any high or low that has led 
to a new delivery up or down. Go back and remove everything to the left. So if I, this is not the perfect, most perfect example, but we'll just make do. That I would take anything on my screen to the left and just fucking block it out, right? Just block it out. I don't care how much to the left. All I'm saying is block out everything to the left that you can see that is still on your screen. And we'll do that. We'll do that. And we'll bring this to the front into the front there we go so now i have a low right here and the high is created right here but if this is the range that i'm dealing with is this range efficient yes or no yes or no is the range efficient what does it mean to be uh, efficient Efficiency would come from <clears throat> an equal number of up and down candles within a block. So if I were to take a block like this, for example, right, like that, and I were to have the start of a delivery like so, this is one-sided delivery inefficiency, right, inefficient. Ideally, I want an equal number of down candles to make the range efficient before price moves away. Make sense? Right? Equal number of up candles and down candles. But visually, I just do a stupid thing like this. And I look to the left and ask myself, is this range efficient or inefficient? If we are inefficient, well, where is it most likely to draw to? This is a bit of a bad example because there's no structure really at the lows unless I uh, move this a bit, which I don't really want to, right? But we'll, we'll, we'll find a better example, which means I can expect or reasonably expect retracement back down into this range. And I'm gonna tell you why it stopped here specifically, right? And we'll show you on another example, um, where it went to or what, or what I target, right? I could have a reasonable uh, expectation that if the range is not efficient, that I would like to make it efficient by print printing down candle bodies to the left here somewhere, right? What we do know that if a range is, is efficient, if I were to include that right there, well, then the range is efficient right there, which means we started off, we went up, we went all the way down, and then we traded back through here. So everything below here is efficient now, you agree? We go higher, we go higher, not efficient, not efficient, one-sided delivery. If you zoom in here, we're not printing bodies back here. This portion is efficient between here and here, inefficient. And I would say everything above here at this point, efficient, right? Everything above here to this point, efficient. Everything below this point to here, inefficient, but way exactly here. If we said originally that this range is efficient, that means in an efficient range, price would seek what? 50%. There's your 50% right there. So visually, you could have these sort of targets. Visually, right? I'm not talking about fibbing anything. I'm just saying this entire move from these lows to these highs it was efficient here, everything above it inefficient. Come back here, we need to print down candle bodies at least to this point right here to make it efficient. But an efficient range tends to seek 50% of it right there. So it's not random that they came back to 50% of the range and moved away. It's the same logic 
that if I were to use everything above here to, let's say here, right, that this retracement from here to here also came back to 50% of this range. You see that? I'm not making this up. I'm just how it is. <clears throat> so for me, um, a lot of visuals come from a lot of targets or what I would seek um, to target come from a fact that is the range efficient or inefficient and um, how does it become efficient or inefficient? Where would I like to see price head to next and why, right? It could be an overnight session. It could be um, it could be anything. If you're looking for, <clears throat> and I, I reserve these for highs and lows, right? Highs and lows. So let's go one time frame higher and just look at let's look at an H4 for example. I know from this high. Let's call it right there to there. I'm not interested in anything before that, right? Let's call it right there. Um, let's do that. And let's do that. What can we say about everything that occurred on the way down? Well, I could say that we went up here we went down here we went back up here but here specifically we didn't quite print a body there we need to print bodies here we need to print bodies here right if i can see all of that then i have targets to look for which means that when the delivery starts down here i look left and find out where do they need to deliver to if i find that everything down here from this point to down here back up to this point is efficient let's take a look at um, something here really quickly from this high or this high to this low everything is efficient because we had delivery here delivery here delivery back down here everything below here is efficient well then an efficient range would seek 50 percent where to next where to next next would be printing bodies here printing bodies here they do that you see that so visually all i'm looking for is where do they need to make the range efficient and why if they if they are inefficient above certain areas they come back and make it efficient so above here they come back all efficient all efficient all efficient if all of this is efficient above this level right here from here to up there then this retracement that's 50% So we're only seeking range efficiency all the time, whether you be talking about low time frame, high time frame, five minute, um, 15 minute, whatever it is, right? Whatever it is or whatever it may be, your quest will always be where can, where and how can we make the range uh, efficient? If the range is already efficient, let's go on a higher time frame. If the range is already efficient, then they may not be um, depending on whether there are breakaway gaps above or below the efficient range, the max expectation would be 50% of the range. So I could argue that if this is an efficient range right here, this is efficient here, all of this is efficient, that when we get back to all of this being efficient at some point, that 
they would seek whenever it is 50 percent does that not align somewhat with what we just opened up this call with right here I'm only interested in what I can see um, see in front of me, right? And it's why I didn't want I didn't want this to happen um, on Friday, but I allowed for a body to print right there. I didn't want to see it go so deep if I was bearish, but I mean it is what it is. It's going to be the same thing uh, over and over again. Now, what do you think happens on uh, a higher time frame where seemingly if I did something like this, we could say that have they done sufficient work Let's go one higher. Have they done sufficient work here? Looks like they have. Printed a body there, not random. Have they done it above this high? They've printed bodies here. They've printed bodies there. They've printed bodies there. They've printed bodies there. They haven't printed bodies back there. And the counter argument would be if they were to retrace at all that we could look at something like that so one-sided delivery should always be made uh, efficient at some point whatever that point is or whenever that point um, comes right I think we covered quite a bit uh, in the stream let's have a look here it's about one and a half hours I don't want this to go on for too long because it's a lot to digest right it's a lot to digest um, range efficiency trading order blocks with or without uh, order pairing uh, zones and what I can tell you is keep it simple right fuck your opening ranges and your event horizons all of that other sh silly shit right when I go back and think about what I would like to see on my chart it would most probably be just these three ranges maybe just even two right just the 915 9 to 915 and the 2 a.m. range because if I were to have any um, what is the word if I need um, to know why an entry should be more highly probable with or without these on my chart if well if I pop these on then you can see that when we're above or below these ranges they would support serve as support and resistance when we are above these ranges they would serve as support or resistance and why they become draws crazily enough why the why they become draws right it's it's like very random that this high at nfp right here was the exact 9 a.m high right there yeah we'll get um we'll get expo to put it on a group call or some or something it's just a range box by nephew Sam, right? So all I'm doing is stupid shit, right? If we have something that defines what we want to do, like this range, we need a range to define our thoughts, our ideas, our biases. There's the BOR range right here. We close below it. CSD, order block, 50% long. 915 range we close above it order block inside it 50 percent long 
I don't want to have any complicated fucking ideas and standard deviations and all sorts of silly silly shit on my uh, chart I actually just prefer uh, keeping it simple having a range to define um, what I'm looking at and define where and how my entry should form right I'm gonna stop it there any more questions before we um, go off uh, yeah anything can happen uh, high after they print um, candles they could reverse and go higher if it was bearish delivery or they could uh, just fall off a cliff anything could happen we'd want to see what what up or down candles are printing and whether we are CSD down candle highs or up candle lows confirming them as audible order blocks and then we'll take it from there right thank you kids i shall catch you in the group anytime anytime <laughs>